Okay, welcome to the Godot um, side scroller tutorial. This will be part three in our tutorial series. Um, in this part, we are going to be adding enemies and an enemy spawner that creates the enemies moving towards the player. We might be able to get the player's ability to um, shoot and destroy the enemies. Depends on how much time we have in the video. I'm trying to make all the videos like orientated like 20 minutes long try to keep it consistent but um so go to your google drive well i have all the assets linked on in the description and so it should have these tutorial assets um yeah you go download those and if you haven't already and um if you want to use your own pixel art that works just fine too this is just to make it easy for other users to the work on the game and learn to focus on coding so um go to your go dot tutorial assets folder and drag in your enemy your enemy sprite and if that doesn't work what you want to do from the last tutorial is split screen these go to your go dot folder your project folder and just drag it into here um, yeah, that's basically how you uh, how we're gonna do it for now on. I'm probably not gonna go over that anymore because I think you guys already learned how to do that. Um, if you have any, if you if you're having issues with that, you might need to go look, um, find some more information on YouTube or um, try checking your project and make sure that you're actually importing it in the right project. And now in this tutorial, we're gonna, yeah, let's start adding our enemies. So press the little plus button right here. We're gonna add a new empty scene, do custom node, and do sprite. We're gonna name it enemy one, because we're probably gonna have multiple types of enemies. And we're gonna dra drag our PNG into the texture. And it should show up like this. If you don't see your um, image, or if that doesn't work for you, just do load, and then you can do that. Um, if it's blurry, make sure you have it on 2D Pixel and re-import it. Okay, so now we have our enemy sprite. Now we want to add our hitbox using an area 2D. Remember, an area 2D just checks if a uh, physics body or another area collides within the the collision box under the area. So now we're gonna do a collision shape, which is our how big our area is gonna be. And make sure we have pixel snap on so we get the pixel snapping. And since it's um, a little, since our um, sprite isn't, um, I think it's either, if it's not, I don't think it's because I think it's a, if it's an odd number of pixels, it won't actually um, fit over the entire collision shape of it. So you can do as you can kind of just try to, it doesn't need to fit the sprite exactly, but like stuff like this should be like close enough to it. So I'm going to kind of have it like this. You can also tell our enemy isn't pointing the right direction. That's going to move towards our player. And the reason why I made the sprite like this so if we wanted to add player customization and stuff, we can just do that. Okay, so now we have our area in with our collision shape. If you, I usually just turn off the collision shape, the eye. It doesn't turn off the collision shape, just makes it so I can't see it. So I can actually see my sprite better. I'm going to rename the area to hitbox. And I think that's it. So now we need to make our enemies move. So basically, essentially, it's basically the same script as the bullet. Press create, add the script, press the little script icon right here to add it. Um, so now I'm going to do variable speed. We'll set it to like 50. We'll make it half the speed of our bullets. We might need to change that later, but for right now, I'll do that. Function underscore process. This happens every single frame. Um, the global position dot x minus equals because we want to move left speed times delta 
Remember the last video we did delta so it doesn't go too fast? So it doesn't like move as fast as the computer can process it. Make sure it's the same speed for every computer. And I'm going to press control S and we are going to save our scene. If that doesn't work, you just do save scene. Or if you do, you're on like Mac, I think you do command S. Um, and yeah, that brings us to Godot's also available on Mac. So if um, you guys have, because um, some of my students in my um, game dev group, um, I thought it was only on Windows. And so if they have a Mac, they can use that. Um, that's off that's off topic, but we'll just go back on. Um, so yeah, our enemy should now move to the left. Oh yeah, I forgot to flip the spray. So the only reason why I drew him in this direction is to um, make it so if you wanted like change your player color or something, you can do that. But let's select our sprite and go to offset. And then do flip H, which just flips the sprite horizontally. So now we should have a flip sprite. Yeah. Um, so now it should look like it's coming towards the player. So I'm going to resave that. So now we have our enemies, but we need the generator to create the enemies outside of the world, like right here. So we're going to do that is we're going to add a new scene by pressing plus button. Do custom. And we're gonna do, um, what's it called? Position 2D. So now all we need is a position to create the enemies in. This is what it's gonna do for us. I'm gonna rename this to enemy generator. Actually, I'm gonna go with my normal naming convention, do the underscore, then don't capitalize the next one. This is so I just keep everything consistent because I've been using underscores on some of the stuff. So, um, I'm gonna add a script to this. Actually, before we add a script, I want to add an our child node to it. I want to do timer. So now we have a child. Of like that, we'll set the wait time to like, yeah, like one that works. And make sure you have auto start on so it automatically starts. So we're going to come back to signals from our last video. So every time that this timer goes out, we want to create a new enemy. So this timer is going to happen every second. Um, forever. So signals has a built-in signal timeout. So we could just link that to our enemy generator. And now we have a function that whenever a timer goes off, we can create our enemy through the timeout function. So we're going to create a script first before we do that. Attach new script, create, move all of this, go in the timer, make sure timer selected, signals, timeout, select that, connect it to our enemy generator, then press connect. So now we have our timeout in our enemy generator, and now we can start spawning our enemies. So it's basically the same thing from last time, we need to preload our enemy scene from a variable. So the variable enemy equals preload and if we do enemy one, make sure it's dot tscn. Oh that doesn't work. Dot tscn because we want to load the scene. If we don't do dot tscn, it might load like a script or a image and it won't work. It won't create it because it's not the right um, file because we need our scene to do this. So now we have our enemy preloaded. We want to do variable instance enemy. We want to get a reference to the enemy that we create equals enemy dot instance. Now what we want to do after that is we want to do we want to set the, the enemy's position. Actually, we want to make sure it's right in the node tree. And this is actually a good time to do a signal for this. Like in the last video, how we did the signal to, so let's do this. We're gonna do it the exact same way. Signal, um, enemy, here, what's what, what do we call our last signal? I'm just going back in my world script. Um, oh, create bullet. So I'm just gonna do signal, create enemy. 
and we're gonna set the parameters the enemy we want to create and the location just like last time and when we hit timer timeout we want to emit signal create enemy comma and the location we want global underscore position actually location we want it random so I'm going to go back to 2D so I can demonstrate this. We want it random up and down right here. We want it randomly created right here. Outside of it. And so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to do for position is I'm going to split it up into a vector 2. So we'll do capital V vector 2. And our position that we want to create is 180 because our width of our window is 160, but we want to create it outside so you don't see it being created on it on the screen. And then for we also want to do random for the Y. So we want to do random range 0 to um, 90, which is the height of our window. So now we're creating it at x, 180, at random range, um, 0 to 90. And what am I missing? Oh yeah, I need another parenthesis. Because I have a parenthesis here to emit our signal, then the parenthesis here for a vector, and then our random parenthesis. Just make sure you have the right amount of parentheses, or else it's going to give you errors. Um, so now we have our um, data set for the signal. Let's save our scene. Control S, enemy generator, or scene, save scene. Um, I'm going to go to our world. So we, now we want instance the scene. So you can press this little button right here and then click enemy generator. You can also add that by going to your file system, scrolling down and dragging it into the world like this. But I'm just going to do it the this method because I find it easier. So now we have that in our world. And technically it could be anywhere in the scene. It won't matter because we set we don't actually use the position of it. But I'm going to move it outside like right here so I know it's the enemy generator. And you can also, once you hover over it, it gives you the name, which is kind of nice. Um, so now we need to collect that signal because it's not connected to our world yet. So do make sure you have your enemy generator selected and do create enemy. You want to connect that to the world. So now we have these functions that are our signals. Now we're going to be creating lots of stuff. So var enemy instance, which you can kind of go off the code at the top of what we're going to do. Enemy dot instance, add child, enemy instance. So we created our enemy, we got a reference to it, and now we're adding it as a child. And we're saying our um, location, our global position, equal to location. And there's still one thing I want to do, so make sure you save it. Go to enemy generator. And also if you also if you see these parentheses by it and like a little star in between them, that means you haven't saved them. So you want to make sure you have your scene saved. Because when you exit out you could lose your progress if you didn't do that. Um so whenever we do randomize, the computer random is not random. I'm not really going to go in depth with this because I don't really know much about like random and how computers generate like random numbers and stuff. But just doing random range by itself, it requires, it kind of uses a seed, which basically is, um, it sets, so each, like computer random isn't random. And so with the same seed, it will give you out the same value each time random is called that's like how in minecraft you can use seeds to create the same world over and over again and it's kind of cool because that's how like no man's sky works how it creates a universe as big as ours it just uses seeds and so it doesn't store those information it's just created at the same time every time you're running it so 
what we need to do is we need to randomize the seed. So up here you want to do randomize. So just make sure we don't get the same output each time. So whenever we're doing like random stuff, it's it's always safe to just randomize it before you do that. Um, I'm probably going to do a uh, tutorial in the near future about um, generating a procedural world. Um, like a platformer. How you have like a procedural world, kind of like in Terraria. I'm going to do a video on that. I'm making a game right now about that um yeah more on that in the future so right now i think we have it all set up so we could just run our game oh we're getting errors see nothing's happening our debuggers getting stuff so let's see what we did wrong calling method create um enemy expected two arguments but called only one Oh, so I forgot to set because you have our enemy right here because I just called the signal But I didn't say which enemy we need to do so right enemy comma that I Kind of so what my brain kind of did is I I saw this argument and this argument. I'm like, oh, yeah It's the same as up here But this doesn't really count because it's just asking like which signal you're wanting to emit but and then all of these kind of happen after it, so kind of a mistake on my part. But you can use this um, debugger to your advantage and try to figure out what your error, how like how you got your errors. And it's a really simple fix, but it really helps with the debugger. So press play, and it should work now. Maybe. Maybe not. I can hit remote right here and see what's happening. See if our enemies are actually being created. It's creating players. That's interesting. Why are we creating players? Oh! Um, kind of another problem on my end. I don't know why I linked the player.tscn. Um, you guys are probably screaming at me right now. You link the player, not the enemy. Um, so yeah, make sure you do the enemy. And now, now it works. Now we got our enemies in. And they're moving towards the player. So yeah, make sure you actually link the right, in, the th right thing in. Um, and it looks like we got enemies working. So signaling is very key to instancing. Um, using different parents so whenever you're doing that I would always use signaling um, whenever I'm doing it as like a child of that object obviously I wouldn't need a signal for that but um, so next video we're gonna make it so you can shoot the ships and destroy them and we're probably gonna polish up the game a bit maybe do some like particles and stuff and maybe add some new enemies this is all like in the future Probably not all in one video, but polishing it probably in the next video. Then maybe adding some more um, enemies in the next video after that. So thanks for watching.